I suspect this is a question you've, you've never been asked before. I'm curious if you've thought about it. Sure. There's not a whole lot of research that exists to be able to answer it, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. So um, the field of research, and this is actually what I told uh, Paul Saladino when I spoke to him in person, when I met him for the first time, when he he argued to me that um, these compounds in, in plants were toxins that are harmful to health. I said, you know that there's a whole field of research that has existed for decades on this topic where scientists all over the world have been studying the effects of these chemicals in plants on human physiology, and it's it's called xenohormesis. And we, we have thousands of studies on xenohormesis on many hundreds of different phytochemicals and their health effects. And um, while you can certainly cherry pick examples of actual plant toxins that are genuinely harmful to health, um, the overall body of literature on things like curcumin and quercetin and anthocyanins and um, sulforaphane and many, many dozens of others. Flavonoids, you know, right? Yeah. It is very clear that they have a positive effect, not only in nutritional epidemiological research, but in randomized controlled studies in, in many thousands of randomized controlled studies that show clear beneficial effects and reductions of mechanisms of neurological disease or cancer or things like that. So um, I'm curious though, as a form of hormetic stress, as something that um, acts through hormetic pathways, which is, this is a big area of passion of mine. It's the subject of my next book. One of the principles that's important in that area is, well, I, I'd say two. One, there's generally always a biphasic dose response in terms right. of hormetic stressors, which, which yeah. means for listeners, that means that um, a little or moderate amounts are very good and associated with benefits. But if you have way too much, it can create harm. This is even true with things like exercise. For example, if you are doing massive amounts of exercise, running uh, yeah. ultra or vitamins every week or something like that, you're, you're yeah, or vitamin D or the, or iron, anything you take too much of it. This is sure. exactly what you said, a biphasic too little is bad and too much is bad. Right. Even sun exposure, we get too much of it. It's, it right. can be harmful, create DNA damage. If we drink two gallons of water in the next 10 minutes, we can cause permanent brain damage, put ourselves in a coma. Everything's in toxic in too large amounts. Right. Um, and if even if even that's true of water, uh, I'm curious if you have any thoughts on if there's a threshold at which too much phytochemicals might start to turn into a net negative instead of a net beneficial effect. No, it's, it's we're we're a primate. We're only a fraction of a chromosome different from gorillas and chimps. We're designed to be plant based eaters our digestive tract and such. And the evidence on what your the biphasic response has shown that when you're getting, let's say, beta carotene from food, you're getting it in a spectrum of a hundred other carotenoids too, in the right amount. You can't get levels that are toxic and unless you took beta carotene in a pill without the other carotenoids, because it competes with absorption with the other hundred carotenoids. And you can't overabsorb one when you're taking in food that has a hundred different types. It's the same thing with phytochemicals. The only way there's only about a hundred different glucosinolates and isothiocyanates and cruciferous vegetables that you can't get a concentration of one to cause damage like that, unless you concentrate it in a pill without the other isothiocyanates and glucosinoids that were in the food. Food prevents us from that happening. And we're our bodies are designed to accept these phytochemicals from food. But when we think we're going to isolate them because sulforaphane from broccoli is so powerfully against cancer, we're going to concentrate that sulforaphane in a pill and take it in a higher dose that you couldn't achieve from a food. That's when we see these problems develop. That, you know, that's when we see the potential for what you're talking about, which now the body's being irritated by this chemical to a degree without having compensatory ability to build back stronger in response to it because the chronic exposure is too high and too often. Mm. So yes, it's it's not possible to do that with real food only when you concentrate them in supplemental form. Uh, and this is, this is sort of an argument in the direction of too much use of herbal extracts or, or plant food extracts could potentially uh, create some negative effect in, in that way. And, and an argument in favor of deriving most of these phytochemicals from whole foods. Correct. Okay. So that's right. We derive most of our chemicals from whole foods. We could say, what about just extracting those anti-cancer nutrients and adding them to the diet in a pill, not going to be as effective or as safe 
as taking them in a food form, which we deserve, which our bodies and the, our, pre, our you know prehistoric ancestors' bodies have been eating these chemicals for thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. Mushrooms and onion, the organosulfite compounds in mushrooms. I mean, in, in onions and the different compounds in green vegetables. We've developed a dependency on these such as ergotheanine found in mushrooms and other um, foods that we have a receptor on the cell walls that bring the ergo, that attach, ergotheanine attaches and stabilizes DNA from aging. And why would we even have an ergotheanine receptor that stabilizes the, the aging of the cell if we weren't have some ergotheanine exposure in our environment eating mushrooms? It's, you know, it's the body, the human body or the primate body wouldn't even have that in there. Um, the point is we have all these receptors and we have the... Um, antioxidant response element that's fueled by flavonoids and other and, and isothiocyanides. In other words, it turns on the, the um, antioxidant response element. It's called the NR, NRF2 transcription protein activates, is activated by these phytochemicals we're talking about that turns on the antioxidant response element that enables the cell to repair broken DNA cross links, remove toxins, and otherwise heal and reconstitute healthy tissue in cells that are damaged. And why would it, those, that, that mechanism be fueled by phytochemicals if we didn't have them exposure to them in our diet? The whole idea is just utterly um, anti-science.